the brainwashed drug addicts in America and the welfare recipients. He's the good white man who gives everybody everything that they ever wanted, as long as it's not out of his pocket. I'd like to see what his charitable donations were last year. <laughs> it's like all the Berkeley liberals. Go see what they actually give away to anybody as they eat uh, at salad bars for free, steal food. They once in Berkeley years ago experimented with a, with a grocery chain called the Co-op. It was a thing of the 60s and 70s. They used to call it the Co-op, which those of us who met, knew better called it the Coop. Because it was filled with mad chickens running around eating off the salad bar, stealing wheat, stealing like oats, and then put it. They had special raincoats that they wore with uh, big pockets on the inside where they'd stuff food in for free. That's just from their own co op. That's socialism at work. It went out of business. They, we should see how self righteous they were with the co op. You see a little of that today in Whole Foods. They think they're doing something good for the planet. Have you ever seen the self-righteousness of shoppers in, in Whole Foods? They don't look like ordinary shoppers, do they? They have a certain look to them like they're doing, they're doing good. They're better than everyone else. They're, they're not buying GMOs. They're not supporting Monsanto. And, well, there's other things that they're doing that are good. It doesn't matter if they're paying five times more than they should. Every time I bought turkey from Whole Foods, it smelled foul to me. I don't know why. Half the food is garbage in there, in my opinion. And I, I've eaten healthy all my life where I can. But please don't sell me on this whole business of the self-righteousness of the, of the healthier food. But I don't mean to talk about food right now. I want to talk about shelter right now. I want someone to give me shelter. Is there anyone out there who can give me shelter? That was a good song by the Beatles. I don't even know how it goes, but that, that thought came to me right now. Do you feel like you need shelter? Are you waking up these days feeling that you can't take it anymore? It almost sounds like an aspirin ad, but it isn't. How can we survive Al Husseini in the White House? How is it even possible? How can we survive a dictatorship? We're living through a dictatorship soft. You don't even know that. Have you heard an opposition voice to anything Al Husseini has said recently about refugees or a two-state solution? Have you heard one voice of opposition to Al Husseini? Where have all the opponents gone? Where? You know, I, I, I watch TV a lot. I know after the show at night. So I like to watch the British House of Commons on Sundays. They replay it on Wednesday, Tuesdays, Monday. Of the Prime Minister, once a week, has to go before Parliament. And he stands there, no teleprompter. And the opposition Labour Party gets to hit, hit him with hard questions. And he has to answer them. It's amazing to watch pure democracy in action. It's amazing to watch the vigorousness of the British Parliament in action compared to this... I, I don't have words for the contempt I have for this political system we have in this broken nation of ours. When you get a stooge dictator like this in the White House, it gets away with virtual murder, and nobody could ever ask him a, a direct question, ever, like he's God Almighty, protected by a sorority of 5,000 people. How much money do you think the executive office spends on public relations? How much money do you think they spend protecting him from the people? Can you add up the money? It came out yesterday that the EPA spends something like $60 million a year on, on public relations. Did you know that? To put out the big lie about the dangers of involved pollution and carbon while they're living high on the hog, all those criminal creeps in the EPA. Did you know that they have a PR department of their own and they have outside PR agents and they spend $60 million a year on it? Did you know that? You think all of this information you read about global warming comes from scientists? It's public relations releases, PR releases. It's invented. Same thing about Husseini in the White House, Al Husseini Obama. Why doesn't he have to stand up there once a week and answer questions, not from idiots like Jake Woodpecker? Jake Woodpecker is the equivalent of talking to a wall with a dummy inside, a dummy box inside the wall. Gives him the questions he wants to answer. But where is the real opposition? Let him stand up and answer Ted Cruz. Let him stand up and answer any of the opponents on the other side. Someone who knows what's going on can articulate them and say, you said, Mr. President, blah, 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 we need to take in 110,000 Syrian refugees. Where are we going to get the money from, Mr. President? Let him answer. Mr. President, you've run our military into the ground. We can't even marshal a military to fight two wars now. 50% of our fighter jets don't operate, Mr. President. Are you alarmed at what you've done? Let him answer that. He doesn't have to answer that. He's got a phalanx of private security around them, 
that goes in so many concentric circles that he's insulated from reality itself. And that's why many of you need shelter. That's why you wake up every day and say, I don't even want to talk about politics. Give me shelter. So now, can you imagine if you're handling it this way, meaning feeling perplexed, overwhelmed. Actually, the word is hopeless. How do you think those of us in the media who really are taking the battle to the enemy feel? I'm not alone. I'm one of the few. It's true. How do you think we feel every day? Do you think we enjoy this necessarily? Some days it's easier than others. Some days I do fly like an eagle. Other days I don't. Today has been a very hard day for me. Yesterday was even harder. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining to you. Nobody is forcing me to be a media star. No one is forcing me to be a best-selling author. Nobody is forcing me to be a great orator. I could quit tomorrow. But if I'm feeling the weight of this oppressive regime and the disaster that Hillary Clinton created by melting Libya down and releasing all of these refugees to the world, first from Africa, now from Syria, with Obama's insane desire to destroy Assad, he created the Syrian refugee crisis. He did it. Don't blame Assad. It was Obama organizing the civil war. They got it in their minds, these morons, these stupid college educated idiots these morons got it in their head that they wanted to bring democracy to syria the same way they wanted to bring democracy to libya the same exact stupidity without looking at the results of their idiocy and look at what happened in libya it opened up a pathway to to africa right into europe look what she did and look what he did now with syria opened up a pathway of refugees right from syria into europe and now into america you say they're doing it on purpose? I'm not so sure. I think they're much stupider than you, than you give them credit for. I don't think they're that smart. I think they're diehard demagogues who have never paid the consequences for their stupidity. I don't think they're that smart. So it's perplexing. You have Give Me Shelter by the Ro uh, is it Rolling oh, Who is it? Is it who, who did that song? Is it Rolling Stones or the Beatles? I can't take it anymore. My head feels like it's going to explode. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like you can't take one more day of that deceitful thing in the White House, that lying SOB? One more lie comes out of his mouth, you feel like smashing everything in the house. Or that hag running for the presidency, that thing called Hillary. That crinkled up old hag. Like she's something fresh and new. She's rotten guava on the jungle floor. And she's trying to sell herself as a fresh orange. My Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss American IN. In France right now, they're actually trying people for saying anything negative about Muslims. Did you know it's become a crime? Francis Le Pen says trial over Muslim remarks is persecution. Here's a woman who is polling so high that her party is liable to win the general election, win a regional election in December. Uh, and now the government, the socialist government in France, is using, is using the courts to persecute her as she went on trial today because she compared Muslim street prayers in France to Nazi occupation. Can you believe this, what's coming to this country? Now, whether or not you agree with her comments, this is France, an open society where freedom of speech is supposed to be paramount. How can a humanistic advanced civilization do this to a woman? Well, the answer is they've been doing it for a long time in fascist France. They arrested that 1950s movie star, the great animal rights activist, Brigitte Bardot, when she warned 30 years ago that the Muslims were going to take over France, and she said they're going to convert our churches into, a, into a, a mosques, they arrested her. They tried her for, I don't know, whatever the crime was. I can guarantee you as I sit here, this is the year 2015, is it not? I told you this is the last, possibly the last year of pure freedom in this country. As the Muslim population increases in this country, Pressure from them and their fellow travelers will increase upon the corrupt politicians, the crony socialists, to impose so-called hate speech laws that will be so broad that you will not be able to offer any criticism no matter what is done in this country. 
I implore you, please listen to me. If you believe in freedom of speech and freedom of the press, enjoy the last days of freedom of speech on talk radio. The landscape will change so dramatically in 2016, it'll hit you like, it'll hit you so fast you won't even know what happened. It'll come out of nowhere. The same is true for books and writings and websites. I am guaranteeing it. That's my opinion. Less than a year. You have less than a year to enjoy the freedoms that you are afforded under your Bill of Rights. I can guarantee it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Last night I saw a show on American History Channel entitled Muslims and the Nazis. They did it. I didn't complain to them. And they talked about al Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem during World War II and how he collaborated with Hitler and how the Muslims wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East to exterminate the Jews. Now, this should be a wake-up call to all of the liberals who hate Israel, the liars, many of whom are Jewish, by the way, who say that they're not anti-Semitic because they're Jewish themselves, but they're anti-Zionist. What these fools should know is that al Husseini wanted to exterminate the Jews in the Middle East before Israel was even created. I'm talking about 1940, 41, 42. There was no Israel. There was no Israel. There was no state of Israel. Al Husseini, a Muslim, worked with Hitler, got the plans for the gas chambers at the Chau, and wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East and round up all the Jews in every country in the Middle East and exterminate them. Did you know that? They didn't teach you that at Harvard? All of you geniuses on the Middle East who are oh so preposterously in favor of the poor oppressed Palestinians. You didn't know that about their history, did you? You don't know that their end goal is extermination. You know nothing about this. You also don't know the equation of the Middle East. We keep hearing that the Jews kicked the Palestinians off their own land, and that the Palestinians are the underdog, and how can you not identify with the underdog, and the Jews are evil imperialists who stole the land. I've heard it all. I've analyzed it all. And I'm sure there are many cases of that being true in the Middle East, in, in Israel, by the way, per se, uh, but there are many cases of that not being true. In many cases, the Arabs gladly sold garbage land to the Jews. Garbage, useless, rocky hillsides that they could not cultivate for, for thousands of years that the Jews made flour and grew crops on. And what you also don't know, but that they didn't teach you at Yale or Harvard, is that at the same time that Israel was created, the Muslims went on a war path in northern Africa. Libya, Libya ring a bell, Algeria. Look at the countries of North Africa. Jewish people had lived there for a thousand years. Guess what your friends the Muslims did to the Jews? They stole their land and kicked them out of the country. 700,000 Jews were thrown out of northern Africa. Jews had lived there for 500 years, rather. 500 years, think about 500 years. Their land was stolen, property stolen, bank accounts stolen, and they were driven out. And where did the Jews go? They went to Israel. It was the only place on earth that would take them. So the next time you get up and smoke your, your liberal lies, get the whole picture right here on the Savage Nation. So now having said that, let's move on to what's happening in America. You're being pushed aside by the social engineers called Al Hussein Obama. Al Hussein Obama is doing to this country a damage that you'll never understand in your lifetime. You'll never understand the damage Al Hussein is doing and why he's doing it. Whether it's a military that's now broken, whether it's the leadership of the military that's been decapitated, or weapon systems that are almost antiquated, the man has almost reduced us to a second-class nation in terms of a military. You don't know any of this because you haven't been told about this from the potheads and the, uh, and the crack addicts in the media. The crackheads who don't look like they're crackheads in the media, believe me, they are the ones who are responsible for what's happening. Because the crackheads in the media are supposed to be the estate, the fourth estate, that keeps the government in check. But aside from Michael Savage and a very few others in the media, there is no fourth estate. It's the fifth column. The fifth column marching alongside the liberal fascists who are stamping on us. Not stamping out the grapes of wrath, by the way but literally growing the poison seeds, poison seeds. Now I look in Canada, I wake up this morning and I see in the Drudge Report 
that's some some schmuck with 